Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 35. Welcome back everyone. I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Um, before we start today's class, let me apologize for my voice. Um, I've been suffering from cold and my voice is in a terrible shape. But uh, it's a promise that I want to start becoming more consistent with this recording. So I thought um, I didn't want to let this uh, week pass without a video on YouTube. So uh, welcome back everyone. Like I said, uh, today we're going to look at uh, dynamic trunking protocol and uh, VTP. Before we go ahead, uh, I request all of you to go to hit on that subscribe button and on that bell icon. Uh, if you're coming in from your phone or if you're watching from your computer, just the same thing, subscribe button and that uh, bell icon so that you can, uh, you would be notified when we upload new videos. Uh, like, uh, like always, our social media contact is here. On the left, my company contacts. On the right, my personal contacts and my email address. So what are we going to look at today? Today we're going to look at, uh, like I said from, from the last video, that uh, from, for I CND2, which we start from the last video, uh, I am going to follow the Cisco ICND2 exam topics. So last time we looked at 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, this video we're going to look at 1.2. That is configure, verify, and troubleshoot inter-switch connectivity, uh, add and remove VLANs on a trunk, uh, DTP and VTP version one, version two. So these are the topics that we're going to go so we're going to uh, closely follow 1.2 first we're going to look at dynamic trunking protocol what is dynamic trunking protocol all the switches when when you when you buy a new cisco switch cisco switch is configured all the ports of the switch is configured in a mode called as dynamic auto mode now what is dynamic auto mode this is a cisco proprietary uh, trunking protocol which lets cisco uh, when when a, when a port is connected with another uh, port another switch uh, these two ports are configured so that they can co uh, communicate with each other and form a trunk if necessary but uh, again it all depends on the on the uh, combination so if you take a, a device out of the box and you take a wire connect one switch and the other end to another switch it will like i said both of them are going to be in dynamic auto mode hence if if you look at this uh, table this is a table that i i um, uh, f uh, created so that it becomes easy for you to know what will happen so if both the ports are in dynamic auto which is the default case the switch will not form a trunk it will still stay in the access mode uh, function so if you want the switch to negotiate a trunk you need to make either one of those sides either you make it into a trunk hard code uh, hard code uh, the interface to be a trunk or you can hard code that uh, interface to be a dynamic desirable these are this is another mode so every switch port can be in four different modes uh, the switch port can be an access port it can be a dy uh, dynamic auto port dynamic desirable or the trunk port so any of these four um, modes it can be in um, so if at all both the sides are configured to be access it obviously becomes access if one side is access and the other side is dynamic auto it becomes an access if one side is access and the other side is trunk that's something that you should not use and again if one side is access and the other side is dynamic desirable it will be an access so just j these are two hard codes so if you say access and trunk these are hard coding either to either to be a trunk or an access port so whenever it is hard coded either side if it's hard coded to be a trunk then it will always be a trunk if it's hard coded to be an access it'll always be an access except for these two cases where the other side is uh, one side is uh, configured to be a access port and the other side is configured to be a trunk that is something that you should not use because it will give you uh, uh, unreliable results right uh, dynamic desirable and dynamic dynamic desirable if you uh, configure obviously it's going to be a trunk because w what dynamic desirable means is as soon as if you're on a dynamic desirable port that port immediately when a wire is connected it starts communicating and saying okay you know what I can become a trunk if it is a dynamic auto it the difference between dynamic auto and dynamic desirable is this dynamic desirable will uh, proactively start and it's the minute you connect it will start negotiating a trunk but dynamic auto 
is a state where it waits for somebody else to start the negotiation. So if both of them are going to be in a dynamic auto, nobody is going to start the negotiation and hence it will never form a trunk. But if both of them are in dynamic desirable, both of them will start uh, negotiating a trunk and obviously it will become a trunk. So this is the table that you need to know uh, to know what will be what will be the uh, uh, port will it be a trunk or an access port depending on the configuration it is configured to. So let us quickly look at uh, this concept from uh, Packet Tracer. All right, uh, this is Packet Tracer. I have connected three switches and connected them uh, in this form. So I'm going to put these three switch. I'm going to take the CLI for all the three switches and I'm going to lay them in a row. All right, so these are the three switches that is connected. So first, let us go and s sorry, right, let's go here and uh, show interface trunk. Absolutely no interface trunk is formed and that is uh, expected behavior uh, because like I said, all the switches are configured with dynamic auto. So dynamic auto, if it's connected, it is not going to automatically negotiate a trunk. So show interfaces trunk will not have any trunk formed between the three uh, switches. Just waiting for that to expire. Uh, we can look into it, show um, interface F0 slash one switch port and it will tell you here that uh, it is in dynamic auto the administration administrative mode is in dynamic auto that is the default uh, so again this switch interface f0 slash interface no sorry show interface f0 slash one switch port again it will tell you it's in a dynamic auto mode uh, even this switch uh, show interfaces trunk obviously there's no trunk show interface f0 slash 1 switch port this also is in dynamic auto and that's expected behavior because by default like I said all the switches are going to be in dynamic auto mode now if you want the switch to be uh, negotiator trunk we need to make one of those ports like from a from a table if you know if any of those ports if I hard code it into a trunk it will become a trunk or if I make one of the ports into dynamic desirable it will become a trunk so let's go to switch 0 interface F0 slash uh, 1 switch port mode uh, uh, trunk I can say switch mode mode trunk to uh, hard code it into a trunk uh, or I can say switch port mode dynamic and I can say desirable right either it can be dynamic auto or dynamic desirable at the moment it is set to auto we're going to make it dynamic desirable I hit this and you can see the switch the switch port went down right up down state line interface changed to state down then up down uh, went to state up that means it negotiated a trunk so I can go here and say show interfaces trunk and you can see that there is a trunk formed between these two switches that's switch 0 and switch 1 show interfaces trunk uh, and we can also see um, uh, this mode is in desirable this is in auto and they have formed a trunk so trunking is formed and f0 slash 1 is in trunking now f0 slash 2 of this is connected to switch 2 but they have not formed trunk so let's go make this uh, interface that is interface f0 slash 1 switch port mode uh, dynamic desirable right and again same thing happens here so this switch the middle switch should have two trunks so we will say show interfaces trunk and you can see there are two trunks fa01 is a trunk fa02 is also a trunk the mode is auto mode is auto that means what are the cases that this when this port of uh, switch uh, one if it is an auto what are the cases that uh, the other side would be in for this to become a trunk one it could be either in trunk hard coded or it could be in dynamic desirable mode these are the only two modes which will make this trunk right so that's something you need to deduce the, the, that table you know you need to learn that table so if you have the table if you know that table you will know uh, by looking at these configurations what will be the uh, configuration on the other side of the switch so that is dynamic trunking 
protocol or DTP. Next, we'll look at wheel and trunking protocol. Like we looked at this concept in uh, I think day 14. Uh, so I'm not going to go in depth, but just to summarize, WTP is wheel and trunking protocol. It's a protocol by which VLAN databases get synced, right? So it's it's not a trunking protocol per se. Like I said, there are two trun trunking protocols. It's ISL, that's encapsulation protocols, uh, trunk encapsulation protocol, either it is uh, ISL or 802.1 Q encapsulation, right? But VLAN trunking protocol is VLAN syncing protocol. It syncs the VLAN databases from one device to another device, right? So in this case, um, like I said, this switch zero. So if you want to explain uh, VTP, switch zero, switch one, and switch two. Now VTPs can be in three mode. It can be in server mode, client mode, or transparent mode. Uh, in VTP three, of course, there is another mode called. Uh, off, but uh, uh, Cisco's exam topic specifically mentions that we're only going to look at VTP version 1, version 2, right? So server is where you make VTP configurations, where you create new VLANs, all, uh, all those things you create in a server. A client, you can't make any, ch uh, cre you can't create or delete VLANs. It can only uh, take database uh, updates coming from a server and update its own server and then transparent like I said is it is uh, as good as being uh, disabled as long as good as uh, being off VTP off but what it would do is it would relay so if at all there is uh, VTP updates coming from one of its interfaces it would take that update and send it out across on another interface or another trunk right so it would participate in relaying that information but it will not update its own um, the VLAN database um, like I said watch day 14 I've pretty much explained everything in day 14 um, what we're going to do is maybe uh, show you the configurations again so these are the configurations so if you want to change the VTP version numbers uh, it is VTP go to the global configuration VTP version if you want to change the mode VTP mode and then you can choose server client or transparent uh, if you want to create a VTP domain that's VTP domain and put a domain name and if you want to create a password it is VTP password and then put a password right so if you want to look at it uh, from the same example from uh, packet tracer uh, three routers uh, spread out and uh, we'll see how um, VTP works. Right, so at the moment, let's look at the VTP statuses. So show VTP status. You'll see that VTP version two is running, configuration revision is zero. By default, there are five VLANs, so that's what is here. And uh, uh, VTP pruning mode, and like I said, you know, pretty much everything is standard some everything that we spoke about in day 14 so uh, if you have not watched day 14 I would just go to day 14 watch that and come back here um, let's look at the VLAN database show VLAN brief that's uh, uh, how you look at the VLAN database we see uh, that there's VLAN 1 VLAN 1002 1003 and 1005 right like I said these are unsupported right unsupported VLANs uh, and uh, these are the uh, this this one default VLAN which all the ports are part of right I same across uh, all the three devices show VLAN brief uh, sh show show VLAN brief right so all the three devices have the exact same thing uh, Again, another thing that I want to tell, I think I missed that point in uh, day 14, VLAN VTP, what it does, it, it syncs the VLAN databases only. It does not, uh, let's say in, in, your, uh, in, in this switch, switch zero, let's say I have few ports configured with uh, like switch port access, uh, switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, whatever, that, that configuration of uh, ports will not get replicated by VTP. VTP will only update the VLAN database, right? So if we, if switch port uh, 2, I mean if switch 1 has VLAN 20 configured in one of its ports, but if the VLAN database does not have VLAN 20, that port will be shut down. It will not work. So VLAN database is a way where, I mean VTP is a way where the VLAN database gets updated. 
uh, and uh, when this switch even if let's say that port has VLAN 20 configured and the minute this VLAN database gets a VLAN 20 that's when that switch will start actually that port will start working right so VLAN database is what gets updated by VTP so at the moment um, show VTP status at the moment all these three devices are in uh, a server mode right show VTP status right all of them are in server mode you will see that here server server and server what we'll do is um, we will create we'll make the middle uh, switch right switch one uh, into transparent so let's say configure terminal VTP mode transparent and uh, we'll make the third switch that switch two into VTP client configure terminal VTP mode client right so switch so zero is where we would create all the VLANs so first let's go create uh, a domain configure VTP domain uh, nwking.org right You're changing the VTP domain um, I think it will get updated here let's let's quickly have a look show VTP status uh, it's in transparent mode so it's not updating itself let's see if this is updating this uh, show VTP status this has updated so transparent has worked it has taken that update coming from switch 0 and it has given to switch 2 now um, when this did not have a domain name so it created a domain name because when it is a null state if it gets an update with a domain it just takes that and updates itself with a new domain but uh, if I make a change to this domain again uh, uh, network king uh, it will not change make that change right so it will not make that change now it will only make the change first time if it's in default so if I want to make that change I need to go here now and I need to make the change so now uh, whatever updates that I, I let's say I'll create a VLAN 100 here and I say name Imran um, show VLAN there is that uh, 100 VLAN here but that will not get updated here show VLAN because um, these are in different domains now right so just remember if it all it is in uh, null domain if at all a new update comes in with a w with the domain configured the device with the null domain will actually update itself to that domain and become part of the domain but once that domain is configured if at all there's a new update coming from a different domain it will not do that right that's the whole purpose of having domains so let's go here configure VTP mode server and uh, VTP domain uh, networking oh that was that how it was uh, um, networking okay let me just it's it is case sensitive so I need to be very careful it's net working right right so now again let's do VTP mode client and let's see what happens now so now does this get updated show we la show VTP uh, status okay it says uh, VTP config configuration revision is 2 let's say show VTP status config revision is 2 and it is so that means it has taken uh, an update so let's say show VLAN brief and you can see that the 100 VLAN has come and uh, like I said there's absolutely no changes that's happened here because this device is in transparent mode and it would relay the information of VTP updates but it will not apply it to itself right so that's what VTP transparent is uh, another thing is uh, if you want to protect yourself you can create a VTP password but if you do VTP password you have to make sure the other side uh, the uh, off uh, the other device also should have the exact same password and only then they will start updating uh, they will start accepting updates on VTP um, next we're going to look at is VTP pruning 
uh, what is VTP pruning? Um, again, some of the devices, let's say if you're, if you're enabling v v VTP, uh, VTP uh, is going to, let's say if you have 100 VLANs on, on your uh, server, v VTP server, and uh, VTP server, uh, if VTP is running, it will update that onto all the devices on the network. You might have 100 devices. And not, not all of these 100 devices would have uh, all the VLANs, right? So what happens when uh, when uh, VTP is configured? Like I said, if all the database of all the devices are updated with the new VLAN information, uh, if there is any traffic for that particular VLAN, that traffic would be sent to all the switches irrespective of whether there is a physical port with that VLAN or not. And that is a bad practice because unnecessarily the bandwidth between those devices are being used uh, even when there's no though there's no host that has to receive that traffic, right? So that is where we need a concept called VTP pruning. VTP pruning is where we uh, uh, put that command called VTP pruning and the switches would start automatically communicating with each other telling if there is a VLAN in that particular switch. So if this if switch 2 does not have any uh, VLAN 10 ports there's no need for switch 1 to send VLAN 10 traffic. So let's say switch 1 has VLAN 10 so it, it needs VLAN 10 traffic but it will it, it need not send the VLAN 10 traffic to switch 2 if switch 2 does not have any uh, clients w on VLAN 10. So switch 2 will tell if VTP pruning is enabled, VT v switch 2 will tell switch 1, please do not send me VLAN 10 traffic because I don't have VLAN 10 connected to me or any of the ports configured in VLAN 10. So that's what VL VTP pruning is. That's one way of doing. Another way of doing is by making use of something called as a VLAN trunk uh, so trunk allowed uh, command in in the switch port but the problem with uh, trunk allowed uh, command is it's a manual way of doing it so you're going to tell each of those trunks what are the vlans that is allowed in it and what are the trunks that what are the uh, vlans that's not allowed so you can choose one of the depending on your situation you can choose vtp pruning for vtp pruning obviously vtp need to be uh, enabled uh, in today's world a lot of organizations don't like vtp because of the uh, uh, dangers that it has and a lot of other uh, reasons they don't want VTP they do manually do it so d if your organization is doing uh, not doing VTP then you can't obviously use this you will have to make use of the hard-coded method where you say go to each of those uh, trunks and say switch port trunk allow VLAN and tell the VLANs that's allowed and what is not allowed uh, since uh, VTP pruning command is not uh, uh, available on a packet tracer. I'm going to show it on GNS3. So if you come into a switch and type, uh, if you go to Google global configuration and say switch port, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, say VTP pruning, if you hit enter, it'll say pruning switched on. That's all. You just have to give that one command which says VTP pruning. Uh, and uh, if you go into uh, show VTP status you will see VTP pruning mode is enabled right so that's how you enable VTP pruning mode and uh, if if you're if this is a ser I mean obviously you make that configuration in the server so you go to the server and say VTP pruning enabled and automatically VTP when when the VLAN database uh, is updated by VTP VTP would update that to all the connected devices that means all the connected device VTP pruning would be enabled and automatically those switches would start communicating with each other to minimize the uh, 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 traffic that is traversed or tra traveled through uh, those uh, trunk links that's how you do using VTP pruning but in case you don't uh, want to do VTP pruning you need to go into that interface let's say interface E0 slash uh, 0 and then you need to go switch port uh, trunk uh, allowed VLAN and then you need to you can say what you want so you can say if you say VLAN 10 then VLAN 10 would add it to that database but if let's say you have added 10 you want to add one more you say the, you say add and then you put another number 20 then it will become 10 and 20 that's allowed if you want to add more you you let's say so let's say I do uh, before this I'll show you something else so um, do show interface trunk right there is this trunk 
and uh, it says at the moment VLAN 10 is allowed uh, that's because I made a change earlier but by default all the VLANs are allowed right all the VLANs are allowed on a trunk uh, so like now there is 10 on that if you want to add one more I would say switch port trunk allowed VLAN and I would say add 20 and do show interface trunk you would see that now allow VLAN is 10 and 20 right so any other traffic uh, would not go through uh, that trunk right on the trunk they would say allow vlan is only 10 and 20 that means you cannot uh, send traffic for any other vlan so that's how you do the uh, manual way right so depending on what you need you can choose vtp pruning or vtp uh, trunk allowed command today's offer code is day 35 hyphen 90 OFF so you can use this offer code right coupon code on our website to download anything with 90% off so if you want to uh, if you always thought of uh, buying our uh, uh, presentations for ICND1 this is about the time because you're getting 90% off if you want to buy the labs I have few labs online we will be having more soon but uh, one of those labs that labs that is available there if you want to buy you get a 90% discount so make use of this this is only for uh, one day so um, on 12th of November uh, uh, midnight GMT this would stop working right so uh, go ahead and make use of it when it is available um, and that's that's that and uh, thank you so much for watching today's video I apologize for my voice once again um, I'm really really not well but uh, I had to do this for you guys right so thank you so much we'll be back uh, next week with another video continuing uh, this ICNDC uh, 2 series and hopefully we continue and finish this series very very soon. Thank you and to see you all soon. Bye bye.